Good morning. Hope everybody's doing all right this morning. We're running a little bit late. Left the house this morning. Had to stop and get gas on the way here. Running low. Didn't account for the time it would take to stop and get gas and get all that done. So we're a few minutes late. Now my hearing aid battery is dead my hearing aid battery was dead well that one's still dead but the one in the hearing aid is hearing good now praise the lord quick battery change and it won't be but about 20 minutes this one will start hollering low battery <laughs> Good morning. Hope everybody's doing well. Good morning, Miss Cindy, Miss Jerese, Brother Denny. Good to see y'all. I can't tell if there's anybody else up there. Miss Stella, good to see you. Praise the Lord. This thing don't ever want to, to do right when, when I'm on here. Good morning. Praise the Lord. Romans chapter 4 this morning. Romans chapter 4. And we'll get right into that very, very quickly and read Romans chapter 4, all 25 verses. I believe that's what it is, 25, 25 verses. And get into that. Happy Father's Day. Hope everybody that's uh, here is celebrating, remembering, rejoicing. Happy Father's Day. You say, my father wasn't any good. You got a good father in heaven. Rejoice over that one. Celebrate that one. Our Father which art in heaven. The best father ever. And uh, we're thankful for that. Praise the Lord. I'm thankful for my dad. I'm thankful for all that he was. All that he instilled in me. All that he <laughs> instilled in several different ways. Some of it he talked. Some of it he yelled. Some of it he beat. <laughs> some of it he just modeled and, and was a good example. Uh, and most of that was all my fault. It wasn't his fault. He gave me what I needed. And uh, that's what more kids today need, is what they need. <laughs> they need a whooping. They, they need some instruction. They need some help. And uh, so I'm thankful that my dad was a good dad. I'm thankful. The, and, and his memory is a good memory. It hurts to know that he's gone. It hurts not to be able to have him here. It hurts not to be able to spend time with him. But I rejoice that his testimony, he, he trusted Christ, and he's in heaven. Praise the Lord. He's not in heaven because he's a good man. He's not in heaven because he's a good daddy. He's not in heaven because he treated mama right. He's not in heaven because he worked hard. He's in heaven because he put his faith in Christ. He believed and God saved him. It was accounted unto him for righteousness. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Brother Al. Brother Derek, good to see you. Miss Della, good to see you. If I miss somebody, I'm sorry. I ain't trying to miss nobody. Happy Father's Day. Romans chapter 4. Let's get into this and read. We've got some other things we've got to get done this morning before church. Camp starts tomorrow. And uh, we'll be going down to Oconee Baptist Camp. And looking forward to, to all that's going to be there with the teens. Romans chapter 4, verse number 1. Let's read together. If you got your Bibles, get your Bible. Don't just listen to me. Get your Bible. Look at what it says. Take notes. Ask questions. Write some things down. Study some things out. Go look at some different chapters, some different things, and, and see where it comes from. Uh, before I start reading, I got one thing I need to, to turn. I'm running a <laughs> I'm running a verse by memory. That's dangerous. It might not even be in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Praise the Lord. We'll be back there in just a minute. I just something popped in before I started reading. Morning, Miss Tessa. Good to see y'all. Miss Susan, good to see you. Uh, chapter 4, Romans chapter 4, verse 1. What shall we say then that Abraham our father, as pertaining to the flesh, hath found? For if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, 
and it was counted to him unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is a reward not reckoned. Notice that word counted in verse 3. That word reckoned in verse 4 is, the, is a reward not reckoned of grace but of debt. But to him that worketh not but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. Even as David also describeth the blessedness of the man unto whom God imputeth righteousness without works, saying, Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven and whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord will not impute sin. Look at, at Psalm in a minute. When you get a chance, look at Psalm 32, 1. Uh, cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only, or upon the uncircumcision only? For we say that faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How then, how was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. And he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had yet being uncircumcised, that he might be the father of all them that believe, though they be not circumcised, that righteousness might be imputed unto them also. And the father of the circumcision to them who are not of the circumcision only, but who also walk in the steps of that faith of our, our father Abraham, which he hath being yet uns which he had being yet uncircumcised. For the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, and the promise made of none effect. Because the law worketh wrath, for where is no law is, there is no transgression. Therefore it is of faith that it might be by grace. To the end of the promise might be that to the end the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the law, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. As it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations. Before him whom he believed, even God, who quickeneth the dead, and calleth those things which be not as though they were, who against hope believed in hope, that he might become the father of many nations, according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God, and being fully persuaded that he, that he, that being pretty, let me read, there's a comma in here, and being fully persuaded that while what he had promised, he was able also to perform. And therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness. Now it was not written for his sake alone that it was imputed to him, but for us also to whom it shall be imputed. If we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead, who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. When you come to chapter 4 in the book of Romans, when you begin to read, morning, Brother Kendall, morning, Brother Benny, Miss Nancy, uh, Brother David, good to see you. Praise the Lord. God, people popped in here. This thing ain't wanting to work. Brother Philippe, good to see you. It ain't wanting to work. Miss Cynthia, uh, praise the Lord. To God be the glory. Amen. <laughs> when you get to chapter 3, chapters 1 through 3 in the book of Romans, you find out that righteousness is required. You see that all have sinned, everybody, Jew, Greek, Hebrew, heathen, everybody, sinners. And righteousness is required to have that relationship restored with God, to have that relationship. Salvation is more than just going to heaven. Salvation is a, a relationship with a living Father, a living Savior, a living God. It's restored back to the way it should have been before sin broke the fellowship. Righteousness is required. When you come to chapter 4, you find out that righteousness is received by faith. Righteousness is given through faith and by faith. In chapter 1 through 3, the focus is on what we need. In chapter 4, we turn and we focus on how to get what we need. And you begin to study these things. You find out in the book chapter 4 that the reward of righteousness is is justification and we'll look at justification 
throughout the book of Romans, but justification just simply is just as if I never sinned. He's justified by faith. When you look at this, you find out that Abraham received, you see what he received. He received righteousness. He received forgiveness. The Bible says that, that his, that, that what, what did Abraham, Paul teaches by asking questions in a lot of cases. He asks questions. Any parent that's ever dealt with a teenager knows that this is a good way to teach. You just ask questions and then say, how did that work out for you? <laughs> what should we say then that Abraham our father is pertaining to the flesh had found? When, when it comes to Abraham's flesh, what, what did he find? What, what did he see? He said, for if Abraham were justified by works, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. The Bible says Abraham believed God, verse 3, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Abraham received forgiveness. Abraham received uh, um, righteousness, holiness. The Bible says in chapter 3, there's none righteous. There's none that seeketh after God. There's none that, that doeth right. There's none that doeth good. And yet the Bible says Abraham was counted righteous. The Bible never says Abraham was righteous. The Bible never did say Abraham achieved. The Bible says that it was imputed unto him by faith, by belief, not of works. You see, what Abraham received was righteousness and forgiveness. How he received it was not by works. You cannot do enough works to save yourself. You cannot do enough works to get God to save you. Verse number 1 the Bible, we just read, he said, what did he find pertaining to the flesh? For if Abraham were justified by the works, he, he hath whereof to glory, but not before God. Look at verse 4. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. If you work, then you're owed that. If he worked for salvation, he's owed that. He earned it. It's not grace. It's not God's gift. It's not by faith. If you work to earn it, there is no work other than the work of Christ in salvation. When you notice this, you, you see that, that he received righteousness and forgiveness, not by works, but by faith. Look at verse 3. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Verse number uh, 5, uh, the Bible says, But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. But I want you to stop just for a second. But, and, well, well, let's notice this. We said what Abraham received was righteousness and, and forgiveness. How he received it was through faith, not of works, not, but, but, but by faith. When did Abraham receive it? When did Abraham receive the righteousness of God? When? No, notice, if you will, it was before his circumcision. It was before his circumcision. Notice verse 9, Cometh this blessedness then upon the circumcision only? Or upon the faith or upon the uncircumcision only, for we say faith was reckoned to Abraham for righteousness. How then? How was it then reckoned? When he was in circumcision, or in uncircumcision? Not in circumcision, but in uncircumcision. Before he ever was circumcised, he was counted righteous. He was counted righteous. The Bible says he received the sign of circumcision, a seal of the righteousness of the faith which he had, yet being uncircumcised. So his, it was before his circumcision that, that he received the righteousness. Now listen to this. It was before the giving of the law. It was before the giving of the law. Here you find out that before Abraham was ever circumcised, he was counted righteous. He was justified. He was made right in the sight of God. Before the law was ever given, it was by faith. I have a hard time with some of these people that want to want to break up salvation and say, well, in this, this dispensation they were saved by works, and in this dispensation it's by grace, and in this dispensation it's going to be by works again. You can twist and wrangle that all you want to. Abraham was saved by faith, and he's, the Bible says he's the father of us all. He is the, 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 the offspring. He, the, we are his offspring. Faith offspring. We're his spiritual offspring. It is by faith, not by works. You will never work. Nobody's ever worked. Nobody ever will work to be saved. Never. Nobody. It is by faith through the grace of God that we are born again. Notice the words we mentioned a while ago. The Bible uses the word 
uh, counted in verse 3. In verse number 4, you find the word reckoned. You find the word uh, down in verse number 6, the word imputeth. Imputeth. Notice, that, I love verse 7. Blessed are they whose iniquities are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the man, verse 8, to whom the man will not impute sin. David, in Psalm 32, wrote about this. David bragged about this. Paul reminded the Romans what David said in Psalm 32, that there are those that God will not charge sin to. The word imputeth means to assign or to place upon one's account to attribute to. It, righteousness was imputed to him. The word counteth, the word reckon, they're, they're all mathematical terms. And, and it's, it's, it's balancing out. It, it, it's, it's lining up. You, you reckon a checkbook. You, 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 you make what they say and what you say. Line up what's in the bank and what's on your record. Line up. You count it together. And so God, in, in his marvelous grace, looked at us and said that if we would believe the work of God, if we would believe the word of God, if we would believe the shed blood of Jesus and what happened on Calvary, if we would put our faith in it, then we would be forgiven and sin will not be imputed to us. Can you lose your salvation? How can you lose something that's eternal? How can you lose something now by sin when God said he's not going to put it on your account? Your sin as a Christian goes on Christ's account. All your sin, when you got saved, all your sin was put on the right on, on, on the back of Christ and he carried it to Calvary. His righteousness was imputed, put on your account. When God looks at the record book, he sees Christ and Christ and Christ. He sees you as forgiven and righteous and holy, and he sees Christ crucified for sin. That's the whole deal. We said yesterday, Isaiah 53 says that, that if you're going to be saved, then you have to offer the soul of Christ. You have to offer the soul of Christ as a sacrifice. And when God shall see his soul, he's satisfied. It's Jesus. It's all Jesus. That word to, to impute. David said it. Paul said it. Jesus said it. You, that his righteousness has been put on you. Romans chapter 4 is one of the greatest chapters in the Bible. Notice he goes on and, and he talks. We're going to skip some of this and get over here. But, but the, 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 they're not saved by the law. Verse 13, for the promise that he should be the heir of the world was not to Abraham or to his seed through the law, but through the righteousness of faith. For if they which are of the law be heirs, faith is made void, the promise made of none effect, because the law worketh wrath. Where there's no law, there's no transgression. Therefore, is it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end of the promise. To the end, the promise might be sure to all seed, not to that only which is of the law, but that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. He said, "I've made thee father," and 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 here we here we find that Abraham believed. Look look at look at verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own, his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old <laughs> he's a hundred years old but he didn't consider his body dead neither the deadness of sarah's womb he staggered not at the promise of god through unbelief but was strong in faith giving glory to god and being fully persuaded that what he had promised he was also able to perform and therefore it was imputed to him for righteousness now it was not written verse 23 for his sake alone that it was imputed to him. But for us also, to whom it shall be imputed, if we believe on him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead. The question is belief. The question is belief. Do you believe? Have you believed? Then it was imputed unto you. And God will not impute sin to your account, who was delivered for our offenses and raised up again for our justification, just as if I never sinned just as if I've been restored. I've been made whole. I, I've been born again. I'm quickened by the, by the Spirit of God. My record has been wiped clean. There is a record book. <laughs> Hallelujah. There is a record book. And my name ha has been, been, been cleansed. My record has been cleansed. Washed. 
and, and better than just washed, better than just forgiven. Now my record is his record, Brother Denny. My record is his, it, my, my righteousness is his righteousness. That's what we're talking about. Praise the Lord. Somebody needs to get back a hold of just some old-fashioned salvation. Get a smile on your face. Get a pep in your step. And go tell everybody how good. Brother Adrian, it's good to see you on there. Go tell everybody how good God is. Hallelujah. It's Father's Day. <laughs> I'm glad I had a good daddy, but I'm glad I got a better father in heaven. Praise the Lord. All right. Happy Father's Day. Y'all have a great day. Got to get some things done before church this morning. Looking forward to what God's going to do. I'm excited about the message God's given me. And we're looking forward to preaching this morning. I enjoy preaching. Hallelujah. I enjoy hearing it. I enjoy doing it. I enjoy listening to it. I, I, I enjoy watching it. <laughs> so Somebody said that a preacher ought to look like a man fighting a swarm of bees. <laughs> act, like you, like, act like you really believe what you're teaching and what you're going through. Amen. All right. Y'all have a great day.